Good morning and welcome to the Week Ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 19th of February 2021 and the time has just gone 11.42 GMT. And I'm looking ahead to next week, which is Monday the 22nd until Friday the 26th of February. Uh, before we get into what's, what, what's uh, one of the major events of next week, uh, let's take a look at what's been going on this week. Uh, it's been a fairly interesting uh, week uh, for global stock markets. Uh, things started off on a fairly positive um, footing. At the beginning of the week, um, at the very beginning of the week, it was con you know it was confirmed uh, that the UK had had, not, had had vaccinated 15 million people by the 15th of February. It, it had achieved its target. In fact, it, it achieved it actually exceeded its target, and that really kind of not only helped uh, the, the UK market, it also added to the kind of wider view that vaccinations are being rolled out. That should, you know, at least begin the conversation of when are some of the restrictions going to be, be eased, and that kind of put the kind of uh, the the, um, the the recovery mindset, uh, the recovery rebound, kind of into play. Uh, but that didn't really last a whole long, and we'll take a look at you know the reason, uh, the reasons why. Um, in the last couple of days, we have seen U.S. government bond yields, the ten-year yield, hit its highest level in in one year. That spooked the markets just a bit uh, because people started thinking if infl if, if if the ten-year yield is on the rise. That could be because higher inflation is in the pipeline. That spooks some traders because if inflation is mentioned, then all of a sudden people may start talking about higher interest rates, something the likes of the Federal Reserve and other central banks around the world uh, wouldn't want to be considering just yet. So that sort of acted as a bit of an excuse to take some um, to take some of the heat out of the, out of the stock market. So I'll run through uh, the major indices, uh, and then afterwards I'll look at a couple of currency pairs. So this here is the uh, the FTSE 100. Uh, as you can see here, at the beginning of the week, things are looking quite positive. It hit a multi-week high. It was comfortably above its 50-day moving average. The market has since turned over on itself now, so it's currently hanging pretty much on the 50-day moving average. That blue line there, uh, which which comes into play in around 6,557. If you can hold above that metric. The recent kind of upward trend of the last few weeks could remain intact. It likes to remain intact. Should that be the case, and if you take out um, the highs of this week, we could then be looking at retesting the highs of early January. Um, any moves to the downside in the FTSE 100 could potentially find some support in this area here. Kind of, if you look at the lows of February, you know, in around also with the 100-day moving averages, that yellow line is they almost converge on each other in at 6,348. Um, we'll take a look at what happened over in Germany and on the DAX. Um, similar situation, to, to be honest, it is quite similar across the major indices. Um, but just if you cast your mind back to the beginning, uh, early on in February, the DAX hit an all-time high. So it gives you an indication of, kind of the strength that we've seen. If you take a look at the move, if you take a look at the moves that we're seeing at the beginning of this week, they started off higher. Uh, the vaccination hubs roll out uh, was uh, was kind of was propping up the markets. That, along with the continued talk about and hopes and aspirations that the Biden administration over in the U.S. will implement the 1.9 trillion dollar spending package, the DAX hit um, didn't didn't quite uh, didn't quite get an all time high, but it got right up there. Uh, it has shifted a little lower since. It is comfortably above though its 50 day moving average. The wider upper trend is still intact. If you continue to kind of hold above the 50-day moving average, the blue line here, we could be looking at retesting 14,000. A move beyond that could take us back up towards the record highs that were achieved early of the beginning of the, the month. Over in Japan, I'll take a look what's going on on the, uh, the Nikkei. From the Japanese market. Similar scenario here. If you take a look at the price action, the wider view of the Nikkei, very, very impressive upward trend. We're talking multi-decade highs, so that gives indication of how strong the bullish sentiment has been recently. Similar scenario, multi-decade highs were achieved uh, early on in the week. We have moved back ever so slightly. If you do move back further from here, because we're currently around just about well, 30,130, 30-odd, 30 if you do have a slightly break from here, support could be found in around the 29,000 mark area, even if you go below that, back down toward the 50-day moving average. So you know, we're actually far away from multi-decade highs. We're comfortably above the 50-day moving average. That really gives you a good indication of the strength uh, that the Benike is in. Uh, we'll take a look now at what's going on over in the US. Um, I mentioned how about US government bond yields 
ever so slightly caused a bit of a bit of a tremor uh, in equity markets. Um, we also had yesterday some disappointing uh, US jobless claims numbers. You know, we kind of hit multi-week highs. Um, they came in worse than expected. That added to the kind of you know the the, 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 um, the kind of the, slightly bearish or slightly negative sentiment that was kind of creeping into the markets the last few days. If anything, it just kind of seemed to kind of act as a, as a good excuse to kind of, for traders to kind of trim their positions uh, on stocks. Keep in mind, equity markets, beginning of the week, the S&P 500 did hit another, yet another all-time high. We can see here that um, it's in around 3,921. You know, comfortably above the 50-day moving average, this blue line here which comes into play just south of 3,800. So the wider trend is still very much intact. If we move on higher from here, and if you take out the highs of the uh, of, of beginning of this week, we could then be looking up towards you know, the big psychological number of 4,000. But um, I do want to talk about, about the concerns about inflation. Um, we, there were some... Um, there were some concerns about higher inflation. During the week, we saw US PPI um, rise. We also saw import prices rise. So these aren't things, these aren't pressing issues right at the absolute minute, but we have, we have, have seen a, move, a nudge higher in US government bond deals this week. So it is possible that, that that sort of topic could resurface in the next few days or the next few weeks. Um, speaking of what's been going on in the US, I'll take a look at a couple of big currency pairs, starting off at pound dollar. Uh, the pound traded north of one spot 40 versus the US dollar today. It hit a fresh 34 month high. Um, so we're talking nearly three year high on pound dollar. So sterling has been on the on the rise uh, the last few months. A nice upward trend, well, really since September, but it's been powering ahead in 2021. The, the finally we got at, at the back end of, of, um, of, of December, we got the deal between the UK and the EU. That was a big relief. Uh, that, that really helped the British pound. Also, the very much very successful rate at which the UK is rolling out vaccines uh, is helping. Uh, so it kind of seems that of the kind of major economies, particularly of Europe and you know even the world, uh, the UK is kind of you know one of the one of the best performers on the vaccine front. Therefore, hopes are that the UK will um, be unwinding at some point its restrictions, you know, sooner rather than later, and that should should be ahead of other other uh, countries. So Sterling has just recently hit a thirty four a new thirty four month high. If you can retake um, one one forty and we can hold above it. We could then be looking at heading up towards the highs of August 2018 in around one spot 30 on one spot 43.76. Any moves to the downside in the British pound, we could find support coming to play from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average in at one spot 36.39. Notice how on a couple of occasions in December, in the middle of December and in late December, the 50-day moving average acted nicely. Uh, as support. So if a metric has been of importance in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future, although there are no guarantees. Um, stick with the currency pairs, take a look at what's going on on Euro dollar, we'll do a couple of big um, European or Eurozone economic announcements next week. It's been an interesting one with, uh, with Euro dollar, but well, it's been more interesting with say, the dollar itself. So, so it is strong upward trend from November into uh, early January when Euro dollar hit its highest level in over two and a half years, um, largely to do with dollar weakness. Since then, we have seen uh, a, a move lower. So we've had the lower low, we've had the lower high, the lower low. We've had a decent rebound here. But notice how euro dollar, even though it's well off the lows of February, it still struggled, it still failed to, ret to retake the 50-day moving average, this blue line here. And that comes into play in at one spot, 21.52. While we hold below the 50-day moving average, it's likely that, this, that the more recent downward trend is going to continue. Should that be the case, we could be looking at retesting the early February lows in at one spot, 19.52. While a move below that, could take us back uh, down towards the lows of late November in around kind of you know one spot 18. But let's not forget the broader upward trend and the fact that it wasn't that long ago we had its highest level in over two years. So if we do get back above the 50 day moving average and we can hold above it, we could be looking at heading up towards the kind of 122 zone. It just kind of in late January it was it fell just it, it turned around just shy of it. If you take it up, up towards 122, we could then be looking at retesting the highs that we're seeing in early January in a one spot 2349. Now uh, kind of a quick one through uh, of some of the kind of corporate stories that are that are coming out uh, in, in the uh, well, corporate and economic stories uh, coming out in the week ahead. We have um, we have GDP updates 
from Germany, France, and the UK. And we also have unemployment numbers coming out from, from, from the UK. Sorry, apologies. It was the US, Germany, and France. We have GDP numbers coming out. We have GDP numbers coming out for. Um, keep in mind, you know, we're, we're not expecting a whole lot, in term, particularly from, from the Eurozone, in terms of the growth numbers, just because given the, how harsh the restrictions have been. Um, on th from the UK, next week we have the unemployment, we have unemployment details coming out. The headline unemployment rate isn't exactly the, the most accurate measure of unemployment in the UK at the moment, as it includes those um, that are, are on furlough. So, it's so um, that isn't the, the, the most accurate accurate picture. Um, the claimants count um, reading and claimants count percentage is, uh, is considered to be probably a better gauge of the UK unemployment rate. Uh, also, in terms of economic data coming out next week, they want to watch out for would be US personal income and spending, particularly on the spending front. Are Americans going out spending money? Uh, we saw some very strong uh, retail sales from the US during the week. Uh, it's quite clear uh, that the kind of stimulus package that was signed off in December in the US, roughly $900 billion, that included um, stimulus uh, checks to individuals, and it's quite clear that they are going on spending money. Should we see that again um, from the from the from the personal spending numbers? That could uh, add, you know, we could see further upward move in the in the U.S. dollar. Keep in mind that keep in mind what I was, what I was saying about how the euro um, could be a, a, could be looking to turn lower. Um, on the corporate front, we have quite a few stories. Uh, HSBC, Lloyd's, they both have, have full-year figures. Uh, in the last couple of days, we've had numbers from Barclays and from Royal Bank of Scotland, um, both of which had, had fairly sizable uh, impairments. So, so keep, keep, keep in mind uh, when you're looking at those uh, banking stocks. Aston Martin have full-year numbers, as do IAG, the prepared to British Airways. Um, over in the US, we have First Solar, Moderna, the big pharmacy crowd, uh, and also we have an update from Salesforce. Um, I'll take a quick look at what's been going on with Lloyd's share price recently. Um, one of the issues that has helped the British banking sector in the last few weeks and months was that we heard not that long ago from Andrew Bailey, the Governor of the Bank of England, who essentially kind of gave a strong hint that negative interest rates won't be introduced in the near term. And if, not, if they haven't been introduced in the near term, it, they may not be introduced at all. So the result has been we've seen a decent move off the up, relative strength in, in British banking stocks. And even though we're kind of well off the lows of September, we've been difficult. It's, Lloyds has found a struggle to kind of retest the highs of November, but we've been gaining ground recently. If we have numbers that are, you know, at least not terrible or better than expected out of Lloyds because expectations have been low for banking profits recently, if you do kind of take up the 40 pence level, and if you take up the highs, uh, we're well, just shy of 41 pence uh, in early November, we can then be looking at heading back up towards the kind of the kind of 45 zone or up towards the kind of 50 pence zone as a more kind of longer term target for, for Lloyds. Any moves to the downside could find support from the 50 moving average, this blue line here in a 36 pence. It's only really if you take out the lows, um, this area here, the lows of late December in around 32 pence, because then we kind of begin to get a worry because we have been fairly range bound on lows recently. Uh, and lastly, what I'll do is I'll take a look at HSBC, similar scenario. The banking sector has been in focus. HSBC makes all of its money in the Far East. China has had a, has had a much better recovery from the coronavirus crisis than other countries. So you can see here that it wasn't that long ago. It was only during the week uh, that we actually see HSBC share price back to levels seen essentially about a year ago. There, there about. So you get back up to levels last seen on well, well in April of 2020. So HSBC's share price. Not too far, as long as it goes at multi, multi month highs, almost a, a year high. It's been pushing higher recently. If it continue to move on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the, the five pound area on HSBC. Uh, any move to the downside in HSBC could find support from the 50 moving average down around here, of the, uh, and around around just, just shy of four pounds. Or if you break below the lows of early February in at one, so at 30, three pounds 77 it could take us back down toward this red line here the 200 moving average and notice how that, that acted nicely as support in late december and um, once again if the metric has been significant in the past it's something to keep an eye out for in the future um, that's all for, from me from, from this video thank you for listening uh, have a good weekend and have a good trading week next week thank you